and the federal government on Thursday warned of recession in Nigeria. Minister of Finance Zainab Ahmed said this would happen unless Nigeria achieves a very strong third quarter 2020 economic performance. She spoke at a House of Representatives session on the 2021 to 2023 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper in Abuja. Ahmed was represented by the Minister of State for Finance, Clement Agba. The official explained that the COVID-19 pandemic had compounded Nigeria's foreign exchange headache. Ahmed said the country is exposed to spikes in risk aversions in the global capital markets. Joining us to make sense of this, we have Loretta Anyagolu, who is the managing partner for Feed Consult. Good to have you, uh, Chief Loretta. Thank you. Right. Is it still debatable as to whether a recession is looming? Or are we rather to be speaking of uh, it's how to be speaking of it as an imminent event, rather? No, both, both. If you look at it, um, I would say my opinion is that it is looming because the country's income is down. There's been um, there's the, there's been a, a loss of income from the crude oil prices that went down a few months ago. There's been the lockdown because of COVID-19. And then when you look at the level of production in Nigeria generally, the economy grew only two point, about 2.2% um, last year. And if in normal times we were growing only at 2.2% with a shutdown of almost six months and without anything being done differently by the government to uh, increase economic activities at the state levels, not much is happening. It's very difficult to see um, us coming out very strongly in the third quarter without major changes um, being done hmm. as far as policy. So there's no question of the fact that it is looming. But should it happen? No. Nigeria is not in a position where we should allow a recession um, because we have so many opportunities to avoid such a thing happening. And if I may ask you, uh, what are those opportunities? Because you also mentioned there that uh, if major changes do not occur, yes, we are, going, we are going down that lane. So what are those major changes that we should be looking at as, uh, you know, as a nation at this time? Well, first of all, if you look at um, what a developing nation needs to grow, to accelerate growth, massive uh, development of infrastructure, you need a um, manufacturing sector to um, be vibrant and growing. You need the housing sector to be growing. None of these are actually growing at the moment. What can the government do? We, you just talked about borrowing. The amount of money in Nigeria is borrowing. Um, I know that last week there was a lot of controversy on the news over borrowing for the um, tra rail transit. Borrowing is not a problem for a country that is growing, but it is a problem if the amounts being borrowed are not going to be paid back by the income for which it is being borrowed. What I mean is this, if Nigeria has borrowed $5 billion for the rail, is the rail going to generate sufficient income to cover the $5 billion during the period of the loan? Or are we going to be paying off the money from some other sources. So the opportunities are there. Yeah, um, infrastructure, our roads are bad. That's an opportunity. When your roads are bad, it gives you an opportunity to build the roads. You don't have rail transit, that is an opportunity. You need to build it. You have, um, um, you, we have a deficit of millions of houses. Nigerians are, are living in substandard housing. That is an opportunity. Now, what can the government do? There's no reason for us in the 21st century to borrow to build our infrastructure in major cities. We have the population to pay and to support the revenue in this sector. So what it means is that we should have companies, large companies who do this, use their money, use their companies, borrow money on behalf of the government, borrow the money and build these things and then charge for it and recover their money. While government uses its income coming from whatever other sources, including taxes for those things that are built, using it to, you know, um, 
service sectors like education, security, and so on. So I really don't understand why we insist on borrowing to build, for instance, our, our rail transit. If you go to a place like Turkey, for about 10 years running, Turkey uh, continued to be the uh, fastest growing economy in, the, in, in Europe. What were they doing? They just completed an airport that was opened, um, I think, um, was it in March this year or last year? Um, that, was, that cost $20 billion. Not as, no money from the government of Turkey was used in building this airport. They, they concessioned it for 25 years to a couple of companies. They raised the money. They are running the airport. The income from that airport they're going to use to repay the loan they borrowed. That's what you do in the 21st century. You don't borrow to build airports. You don't borrow to build commercial highways. You, you, you use companies that have capacity to do these things. Right. And if we were, if we're doing this at all levels, the federal government level, state government level, you see tremendous economic activities in Nigeria growing because with a population of 200 million, that's already an asset. Hmm. An I asset that can be tapped into to use in generating major economic activities. If I may add to you know, what you have just said and seek for clarity, Analysts, most analysts like you have always said on our program and other platforms that, you know, th there's no problem, there's nothing wrong with borrowing, but the problem is doing it, you know, doing the right thing uh, while borrowing. Exactly. Now, a recent, but a recent assessment puts the blame on our debt repayment profile, pegging it at almost 100% towards debt services. H how did we get here? Are we not getting the right um, advice or who's advising who? <laughs> Well, that's quite, that part of it I can't answer. But I can tell you that if you look at uh, Nigeria's income, the reason why the debt profile is so high is a country as rich as this country, in terms of population, in terms of resources, I mean, the most important asset is the human being. And with the dynamic population that we have, with the, amount, the number of youth that make up this population, over 50% of the population, we have no reason to have a situation where our GDP in 2019 is, is just about, uh, is less than $450 billion. That means the country is poor. Your GDP with a population, with the assets that we have, resources, etc., should be more than double that amount. And if it was more than double that amount, your debt, issue, your debt profile will not be an issue. But again, I insist that the debt growth, when you borrow, you must borrow specifically for certain projects, and those projects must have the capacity to pay back. Mm. For instance, uh, in the news you read earlier, you're talking about the, um, the um, National Assembly calling in ministers to grill them. Some of the questions we accept the National Assembly to ask them is, how many kilometers of road, for instance, how many kilometers of rail, is this five five point seven billion dollars going to give us? Going to cover how many uh, coaches for passenger and for cargo? What is the income revenue profile that is going to be coming? And how long is this loan? And how much will the revenue profile be able to pay off on its own? You don't borrow for the rail and then go to your your income, which has nothing to do with the rail, to use it to pay back. No. If you borrow for rail, then rail must pay for the borrowing. You don't get the money from anywhere else. Mm -hmm. That's where it comes from. And, it, and these things I said will give us an idea whether indeed this has been priced right. How much is a kilometer? We already knew on average how much it costs, about $25 million to $35 million per kilometer of rail. Mm -hmm. That's the standard across the world. Is that what we're paying? Are we paying more than that? How many passengers do they expect? How much are they supposed to be paying? How much cargo? And how much money is supposed to uh, come in? And how are they going to pay back? Right. Money should not go from any other part of our revenue to pay for this rail, except revenue from rail itself. Mm, quite tough questions that you are raising there. Now, uh, you are often, if I would put it that way, an optimistic economist. I'm wondering, what's your prognosis of the way forward at this juncture? 
Well, since I'm not, uh, I'm not one of the decision makers in government, I don't know what government intends to do. But I think that the government should have a major shift in the way they are handling infrastructure development in the country. And when I say infrastructure development, I take it on the broader sense of not just electricity, water supply, roads, housing. Mm. Because these are the fundamental areas that stimulate economic activity. For instance, on average in Nigeria, every 100 houses you build, I've said it before in this program, produces about 500 jobs. If you have a deficit of over 16 million houses, the implication is that the, the opportunity for job creation just from the housing sector alone is absolutely enormous. So what should the government be looking at? Providing funding to, to buyers, young people like you, Amaka, to be able to, to buy and own their own homes. And then that's where a developer knows that if he goes out to borrow money to build houses, these young people, young households, professionals can quickly get to the banks, borrow money and buy their homes and pay over 15, 20 years. Mm. That is fundamental in building an economy. Right. Um, I mean, I look forward to this economy that you have really, really painted. I really look forward to it. Thank you so very much, uh, Loretta. It's not rocket science. It isn't. It's not rocket science. <laughs> right. It only takes the will. All right. I hope our leaders uh, would have that will to make it happen for us. Thank you so very much. And do keep safe out there. Thank you very much. You too, Mark. Have a lovely day. Thank you.